everybody. Welcome to Wings for Life 2021. And we are so excited that you're joining us tonight. And we've had so many people over the last couple months joining us. And sure hope you'll just keep coming back. We're going to keep doing Zoom as long as we have to. We'll be back in person, but we're going to keep this going too, even when we're back in a big meeting so we get to see each other. But tonight I'm going to talk about the assets, the 40 developmental assets. And they're the key ingredients, the key things that we are trying to teach to everybody. But first, I'd like to tell you that while you're um, joining us, please keep your video on so we can see who you are. We always like that. Uh, mute yourself, of course, and we'll keep you muted until we get into the breakout rooms. Um, if you could have um, it, you write anything you want in the chat room, any questions, any comments, anything, because we keep track of all of those. And then uh, you will find this year, um, or actually 2020, uh, we will have all the comments on our, our um, website very soon about everything that was said last year in 2020. And also, if you could register, then we know exactly who you are, and there is a registration link. But let's get started. I'm so excited to share this with you. So the communication and the 40 developmental assets. Here we go. Um, if you are at home, um, and if you have any cups at home, just any old cups, you could grab them. And if you go to our website, you could print out the list of the 40 developmental assets. It might help you, and it might uh, give you something to look at while we're talking. But first of all, what is Wings for Life? because some of you might be brand new. First of all, I'm proud to say we won the American Probation and Parole Association's Award of Excellence in Crime Prevention. We've won all kinds of other things too. And Wings for Life is an empowerment program. It's for the entire family. It's not just for adults, not just for kids, it's for the whole family because we're trying to strengthen everybody. In Albuquerque, we meet four times a, a month and we provide dinner, we eat around the dinner table, but there are all kinds of ways that this program can run, and it has in different parts of the country and the world. And of course, then we do special meetings sometimes too. That an acronym for life, Wings for Life, we're trying to give you wings to fly for the rest of your life, but that life stands for life skills. We're gonna teach you life skills. Today we're gonna teach you a lot. Life skills imparted to families through education. Our mission, of course, is transforming lives to break that generational cycle of incarceration. No one wants their kids to go to prison. I ask this question around the world. Anybody want their kids to go to prison? I've never seen a hand go up. So I'm gonna teach you something today that if you can work on these developmental assets, these are guaranteed ways that are going to help you to cut out at-risk behaviors, which ultimately leads to incarceration sometimes. Of course, at WINGS, we teach manners, life skills discussion, group mentoring, and we do talk about ACEs. ACEs are adverse childhood experiences. And especially with COVID going on, every child in America has at least one ACEs due to that COVID. Um, and of course, I've got the heart in the middle because it's all about love and sharing love and seeing the best potential in everybody that we possibly can. Um, we have some wonderful statistics that I'd like to share with you. Of course, I can only say for 14 years, because last year really didn't count. We couldn't keep track of statistics, really, uh, about recidivism rates. But we have had at Wings for Life, at our educational program, a 4% recidivism rate versus a national recidivism rate of 83%. In a nine-year study, or in a, in a study that was done, a returning citizens, after nine years, 83% of them go back to prison. How many of you want anybody to go back to prison? Or if you've been there, I know you don't want to go back. So we're going to try to help you, and that's why this is so important today. Again, with 100% of our kids for 14 years, if they've come 10 times or more to our program, every one of our kids has progressed to the next grade. That means no dropouts. Don't you want your kids to be successful and graduate and be able to get a job or continue with education with, a, with what they want? And again, in those 14 years, 100% of our girls have not ended up pregnant. So we are proud of those statistics and we want to keep working on them. Now, why are some of these things so important? Well, one in two Americans, one in two Americans will have an immediate family member in prison. If you don't know me or you're new to Wings, uh, the reason I do this is my first husband ended up going to prison. I didn't know anybody that went to prison. Today, it's so pro prevalent. 72% of children of prisoners end up in prison. 
end up in prison. Do you want your kids to go there? I don't think so. So listen to what I'm going to say today. Um, one in three adults in America have a criminal conviction that impacts employability. One in three. I mean, this is just getting out of hand. And then how do you get a job when you've got that criminal record? Somebody was in our office today, couldn't find a place to live because of his criminal record. These are difficult things. We don't want you to get there in the first place. And lastly, I'll just say that at least 95% of inmates are going to get out of prison. So when they get out, are they gonna be better? Or are they going to be worse? We want them to be better, and we're going to work on helping them. So at WINGS, we are going to teach every week, we teach at least one to three of the developmental assets. But we don't only teach the asset. We're going to give you ideas about how to build those assets. Now, there are 20 that are internal, 20 that are external. And I'm going to go through them today. So they really make sense to you. Now, if I said go out, number one, the number one asset, family support. And if I said to you, how do you build family support? You might put your head down. Oh, my gosh, don't call on me. I don't want to hear what you have to say. But if I gave you this list of all these things, gee, you could eat at least one meal together a day. You could limit television watching, TV, watch TV as a family. If I gave you those ideas and then you sat around and you talked with everybody else and then I said, well, what else do you do? I know, because we've done this every year at Wings for Life, and we do it all the time, we learn from each other. Everybody has good practices, but they need to be taught what they are and then shared. So that's what we do. Now, there are some risks here that we don't want you to get involved in, and so you have to have 30 or more of these developmental assets to cut at-risk behaviors. Search Institute has tested over 6 million mid and high school kids around the country. They know you got to have 30 or more. So do you want to have that risk factor in your life? I don't think so. So this is what the sheet looks like on the website. I hope you will pull it up, uh, print it out if you can. Otherwise, pull it up, look at it, and as we're going through these, I want you to kind of do a check mark. Oh, I've got that. I've got that. I've got that. I could work on this one. So let's get into this. And of course, at Wings, over the course of the year and over a course of each month, we try to talk about finance, work, job, school issues, kids, what is their job? It's going to school. Parenting classes and family communication. And then uh, issues that are unique to incarceration. And every week, we have a placement. Now, if you go to our website, you will find this placemat listed um, in the schedule under the uh, uh, Wings for Life communication um, and educational program. And under tonight's lesson, you will find this particular placemat. And of course, manners. We always go over manners. I'm not going to go over that tonight because we're not sitting around a dinner table. But we always give you things to talk about. So you can look at that on the bottom right-hand corner there. And in the middle, we always have information about the particular assets. So let's get into our external assets. So number one is family support. The family provides high level of love and support. That's a very, very important asset. Number two is positive family communication. So what do, you do we do at Wings? We sit around the table and talk. What can you do at home? You could eat around the table. You can um, discuss things. You can, we talked about, we had that big long list. You can watch TV together. You can do all kinds of things. But young person is willing to seek help from their parents. And you have to build that relationship so you, you can um, have that healthy relationship going on. Number three is other caring adults. So when you come to Wings or when you go anywhere, other uh, sporting events or whatever, another caring adult. I'm another caring adult. We have other, many other caring adults at Wings. And then a caring neighborhood is number four. So a person experiences caring neighbors. Now this can be in your physical neighborhood. I like to extend it over to Wings, because if you come to our Wings meetings, I hope that you feel that this is a very caring place, that people support you and are there to help you. you see, I'm starting to build a pyramid here. Number five is a caring school or work environment. Do you feel like your, your teachers care about you? Um, in the workplace, do you feel like it's a healthy environment for you to be in? And number six, oh, I better put a I'll, I'll put a, a cup there. Number six is parent involvement in school. So parents, are you meeting 
with the teachers. I know it's very, very hard now, but if, if, if this is especially uh, important during this time of COVID and when the kids are, if they could, if they are doing school from home, that you have as much communication as possible with those teachers and the school administration. And I know that the poor teachers are overwhelmed too, but this is really, really key. This is a very important thing for you to do. Now, does, do you have your kids where they feel like they are valued out in the community? I know if they come to Wings, we think they are pretty special, and we love to see those kids showing up. But we also have to, to look at, are young people given useful roles in the community? Now, if they come to Wings for Life, everybody's given a role. We've had 18-month-old kids with gloves, plastic gloves up past their sleeves trying to help set a table. We want to involve everybody because we want to value them and teach them that every single person has value. It's a very important thing. Uh, community service. Now, of course, if you're coming to Wings, you are doing community service because you're helping us. Maybe you're putting out clothes. Maybe you're setting the table. Maybe you're putting food on the table. Maybe you're the server and you're clearing the table at the end. You are doing that community service. And it's important to do one more hour or more a week. So you come to Wings, and oh my gosh, you've got two hours in there or an hour and a half anyway. And then, of course, the next one is safety. Do you feel safe? wherever you're going. And do you feel safe in the neighborhood? F safe at school, safe at home. And if you don't, you need to find a caring adult or one of your parents, if you can talk to them about this, and tell them about that situation because that is very important. Now, I like to talk about winds of life. And what are winds of life? Now, this is something I kind of made up because I like to use this demonstration with the cups, but winds of life, loss of a job, or maybe you got a new job. Maybe you're moving. Oh, but you've got to move out, and you've got to find a moving van or a truck or some friends to help you to move. There are, it's exciting, but it, there is also a lot of pressure on you during this time. Oh, my gosh, you get in an accident. Now you've got to deal with the, the repair of the car. Maybe the car was destroyed. You have to get a new car, the finances, all these things, winds of life. A little tiny accident, you just got a bump, and you don't have a problem, but the car is totaled. That's a big problem. Illness, COVID now, is that a wind of life? It is a huge one. You had a, a little cold, not such a big problem. So the, the winds of life are huge and small, but we are constantly, I want you to understand this winds of life theory, we're in them all the time. Marriage, you're getting married, you're so excited about getting married, but oh my gosh, then you gotta have the reception and who's gonna marry you and the honeymoon and the pressure of paying for all of this, but it's so exciting because you're getting married. You're having a baby. Oh my gosh, that's wonderful. But the baby gets sick. All these things about it. And oh my gosh, divorce? Is that a wind of life? That's one of those bigger winds of life, isn't it? And death? Well, of course. That is a huge wind of life. And if you notice, I really highlighted incarceration. What happens with incarceration? It is a huge wind of life. Now, we only had 10 cups here. Four, yep, I've got my 10 here. And, oh, no, I don't. I need one more. There we go. That's 10. Remember, we have to have 30 out of the 40. 40 assets, 30. I've only got 10 here. If I were the wind of life right now, what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> oh, well, I didn't knock as many, over as many as I thought. I didn't have such a big wind of life here. Well, let's keep going, okay? So number 11, family boundaries. Okay, so now I'm gonna, I'm gonna start at, well, I'm not gonna add to this for right now. We'll just kind of let that sit here. Fa family boundaries. Um, your family has clear rules. Do you know what the rules are? Have you talked it over with your family? I think it's important when, I, when my boys were at home, we talked over the rules. What, what time should you get home? Uh, what about after school activities? What are you doing? It's important to know where your kids are and what they're doing. Th that's just one of the family boundaries that's so key. School boundaries. The school provides clear rules and consequences. Do you know what the rules are? Do you know what the guidelines are? If you don't, ask the question. What, what are they? And make it a little bit better. And usually there are uh, guidelines at the schools. Number 13, neighborhood boundaries. Do your neighbors, do they also take responsibility for your children and for the young people in the neighborhood? 
I know when I was growing up, boy, I didn't dare do anything wrong because I, I, my parents would have heard about it without cell phones even before I even got home because one of the neighbors would have gone to say something. It's harder today. We don't know all, all the kids in our neighborhood. And so are we being helpful? Are we reaching out? This is an important thing. Number 14, adult relationships. Parents and other role models, um, it, they model positive, responsible behavior. Are you around adults that do that? If you come to Wings for Life, we try. We certainly are trying to do our best. Certainly hope we do that. Positive peer influence. Who are you hanging around with? Are the kids in your, your, um, your, your closest friends, are they people that are law-abiding? Are they doing the right thing? Are they studying? Are they going to school? Um, who are they? Um, people that are coming out of prison, we oftentimes say, don't go back to, to the good old boys. And I always ask, how many of those people called you or accepted your calls when you were in prison? How many of them put money on your commissary? They always say, no one, no one. They weren't a good, positive peer influence. High expectations. Do your parents and your teachers expect good things out of you? If people expect good things, usually you want to strive for it, don't you? So that's a very important thing. Parents and other caring adults, let's get those high expectations out there for our kids. Creative activities. Now, do you spend three hours or more? And they, all of these things, these are geared, stated here for children, but they're really important for all of us. Are we doing things that are, are better for us? Are we doing art, music, theater, different things that, sports, what are we doing? And sports programs, are we involved in the, in the athletic programs, clubs, organizations? Are we giving back? Are we doing these things? And of course, you come to Wings and you can do all of this. We, we qualify for both of those. Now, this is very important. One of these is spending time, number 19, in a religious community, one hour or more a week. It doesn't matter what denomination, what if, if, if you're um, a, 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 a non-denominational Christian, if you're a Roman Catholic, if you're Jewish, Muslim, Hindu, it doesn't matter one hour or more a week. They know that this makes all the difference in the world. So why do we encourage people to get involved in a faith community? That's why. It's one of these 40 assets. Then, uh, number 20, time at home. Person is out with friends with nothing to do, two or few, uh, fewer nights, uh, two or less uh, week, uh, hour, uh, nights per week. We don't want our kids just going out with nothing to do. Because what are they going to do? Typically, they end up finding trouble. We don't want that. That is the last thing that we want. Now, if I had 20 cups here, and I didn't do so well with the 12, but if I had time to build the 20 cups, I bet I would still blow over most of those cups. Because we don't really have a good foundation yet, do we? So let's keep moving. Now we're going to talk about the internal assets. These are inside. All of those first 20 were the outside influences. Now let's talk about what's on the inside. Number 21, achievement motivation. Person is motivated to do well in school or work. Are you motivated? Do you want to do well? That's so key. It's, it's, it's the key to success right here. Number 22, school performance. Person has a B average or better. Boy, if I had gotten a B, my parents weren't too happy. I needed to come home with those A's, and I worked very hard for those A's. And so are you working hard for that? Are you doing A work at your work? Or are you spending all your time on your cell phone and talking to all your buddies and, and wandering off and, and not paying attention, and the boss is out of the room, so you sit down? Are you giving A quality work? It's key. It's key to how you feel about yourself. Uh, homework. Homework. Number 23, that uh, young person spends at least one hour of homework every day. And how about you when you go home at work? Uh, you know, they tell us, and I, I'm very guilty of this, I do way too many hours at the office and when I get home. I'm working all the time, but that's not a healthy thing. We don't want to work all the time. But are you giving back and doing what you need to do? Bonding to school. Do you care about your school or your workplace? Do you care about that? If you do, it's going to make a difference in your attitude when you go into work. You go into school. Hey, I'm excited to be here. Oh, I got to go. It, all the difference in the world. Okay, reading for pleasure. This is one of the key things. Number 25, reading for pleasure. And I was speaking one time at the American Jail Association in Dallas, Texas. 
And I was the keynote speaker. I couldn't believe it. And uh, I was talking about the education and reading and why this was so important. At the end of my talk, a man stood up, a, a thousand people in this huge convention room, and he said, uh, by the way, I thank you for mentioning education. He said, I'm the head of juvenile justice for the state of Texas, and we give a reading test in Texas. I said, oh, OK, well, good. I knew about the third grade reading test, but I didn't know this. He said, in Texas, we give a reading test. And for kids that don't read at a certain level in third grade, we start budgeting money to build prison beds for them. Because we know that 98% of those kids are going to go to prison. Reading by third grade. You learn to read through third grade. From, third grade, from fourth grade on, so right after third grade, you read to learn. You must get your kids reading. And if you can't read, that's OK. Start working with them. Number 26, caring. Young person or person pl places high value on helping other people. Do you do this? This is so important. Number 27, equality and social justice. Person places high value on providing, uh, promoting equality and reducing hunger and poverty. That's what we're trying to do every week at Wings for Life, try to help break this. And number 28, integrity. Person acts on conviction and stands up for his or her beliefs. Integrity, what, what are you like inside? Are you honest, sincere? Um, how, how do you live your life? Number 29, honesty. Person tells the truth even when it's not easy. Boy, that's a tough one, isn't it? But telling the truth. If you are known as a person that tells the truth, it makes all the difference in the world. Number 30, responsibility. Person accepts and takes personal uh, responsibility. Are you going to stop making excuses, stop blaming other people for why you had trouble at school or ended up in prison or anything else? Or are you going to stop and just say, yes, I made some mistakes. I'm starting to turn my life around. This is important. Winds of life. Now, if I had 30 here, now that's where the, the, the main breakoff point is. So at 30, I probably wouldn't have knocked over most of them. But let's keep going. Self-control, number 31, restraint. Believe, person believes that it's important not to be sexually active or, or to use alcohol or other drugs. So many people are in prison today because of drugs. We're trying to help catch those kids so they never get there in the first place because they, we know if they get in that drug uh, habit, it's spiral downhill spiral. And I don't know anybody that's addicted to drugs that is happy to be there. But once you're addicted, it's hard to get out. Number 32, planning and decision making. Oh my gosh, do you know how to plan ahead and make choices? It's tough with all, look at that little path there with all those arrows. It's hard to make the right decision, isn't it? You have to think it through. You have to be logical. You have to do some preparation. Interpersonal competence. Person has empathy, sensitivity, and friendship skills. We teach this at Wings. We teach you how to talk to one another, how to be more comfortable around each other. Cultural competency. Person has knowledge of and comfort with people with all different cultural, racial, or ethnic backgrounds. Believe me, come to Wings, you're going to see all of us. And we are all one big, huge family because that's what we are. We are all God's children. And it doesn't matter what color, skin, it doesn't matter if we had somebody that went to prison or not. We are all children of God and all need to be treated that way. Number 35, resistance skills. Person can resist negative peer pressure in dangerous situations. People in prison probably didn't do very well on this one. We don't want anybody else going to prison. Please, please learn resistance skills. Peaceful conflict resolution. Person seeks to resolve conflict nonviolently. Why in the world do we need to fight over anything? Let's talk it over. Let's try to sit down. And let's try to figure out how can we come to a conclusion here that will be a benefit to everybody. Number 37, personal power. Person seeks to resolve conflict nonviolently. Absolutely. We want to be able to shake that hand and say, here we are. We're going to resolve this. Number 38, Self-esteem. I love this one. I believe in me. I have good self-esteem. I believe in myself. I know I can do it. And believe me, if you come to Wings, we're going to try to help and, and, and really instill that in you. Number 39, a sense of purpose. Person reports that my life has purpose. 
Isn't that what we all want? A reason to get up every morning? I can't wait to get up every morning and do wings. I hope you wake up every day and, and love to do what you do. And number 40, a positive view of the future, that you're optimistic about the future. The saddest thing is a year ago, I was in a big Ohio prison, and we had about 80 people, 80 inmates, that were going to come to one of our family days. And I said, raise your hand if you've got a positive view of the future. And I saw about 10 hands go up. I just said, oh, my gosh, this is tragic. Believe me, I'm going to work hard. And I said, I'm not going to let you leave our family day that we're going to be doing for you guys and your families with you not having a positive view of the future. I didn't have time to ask them at the end, but I hope they had that positive view. So if you were at home, you could be stacking cups just like I did. Now over here, you're going to see I've got a big tall stack of 40 cups. Now if I were over here and I'm blowing these cups, this is 40 cups. And here we go. <laughs> Oh, my goodness, I knocked over quite a few. But look at all of these that are still here. And what I realized is when my husband went to prison, I grew up in this Leave it to Beaver world, I had all 40 of those cups. I grew up in a loving family. I was blessed. I had that stability and that foundation. Now, this picture on the screen, this PowerPoint slide here, this group of folks, they only had six cups. But you know what they did? They put their hands out. And the rule was you couldn't touch the cups, but they, they were blocking me from blowing that wind over. And what we do at Wings, and why we have that picture on the cover of our brochure, is because this is what we're trying to do. We are trying to teach you to block those winds of life. Now, are we going to build a whole cup of family support at Wings? No. But are we going to build a little piece of it? and a little piece of another, and another, and another. And it, we work all year to build pieces of these and then teach you how to protect those winds of life. So in hopes that you don't ever get into any kind of difficulties. So what is Wings for Life? We're connecting lives, strengthening families, and relationships. And so now I'm going to read our closing story here for you. And this one is so special. This was written by... Mike Silskar, he works with our kids. If you go to our website and you look for the stories that Mike has read, you will get to know Mike. You will find out what a wonderful, loving, kind man he is. And this is dedicated to Soraya Abdallah. And Soraya is our webmaster, and she has breast cancer. And she is facing it with determination. She is facing it... Um, positively. She is looking forward to that future when the cancer is gone. So please pray for Soraya. But now we're going to talk about hope because that's what we all need. And Soraya has hope. So hope is something you could see but can't be grasped by the hand. Hope, it can't be purchased or sold but only given as a gift to someone willing to receive it. Hope, it can overcome mental physical and emotional blockades set in its path to a degree that the mind cannot fathom to resolve. Hope, when nurtured with love, it cannot be crushed, pierced, bent, or broken. Hope remains unyielding to the task set before it and does not dwell on the past. Hope believes all things are possible and obtainable unwavering in its pursuit. And hope, it is a gift. When received, it's as cherished as life itself. Isn't that beautiful? So now, thank you for joining us. If you're on Facebook and YouTube, and YouTube um, we are going to now go into our breakout rooms for our Zoom audience. Join us next week. We've got a wonderful speaker talking about your why. He is the founder of the Why Institute. And Dr. Gary Chapman, you're not going to want to miss it. So see you next week, everybody. Thanks so much.